Hey everyone, welcome to Weekend Project. This is Laura Lynn from the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. We are working on a husband made block. My husband made this block because he said that I, well, I was obviously whining last time because <laughs> we couldn't find another one. And uh, I really like something of this sort of idea, idea so he zipped it up and we're going to be doing that one. Sort of. Um, at least a variation of it. Anyways, so I have picked my fabrics. I've got my tree and I traced it out onto the, you know, um, some sort of foundation pillion. Um, you know, it gives up structure, right? So, and it's easy for applique. So I have this for my tree. So I'll cut it out there. Some I just winged it. I had this left over, these little uh, yellowing um, orange blocks sort of thing that I did for a pumpkin table runner and had some pieces left over and to me it kind of looked like fire. So there's my fire for my fireplace. I've got my stockings in two different reds. I just traced it out. Do a little, just do a little trace or a little, you know, do your own, but make sure you're doing it the right side. So when you're sewing down, it's, you know, your stockings aren't all the opposite direction, like the mitts. Remember the smitty mitties? Anyways, that actually, side note, is my prize fair winner while hanging. I was yipping and kayaking about for so many episodes. So, yay, it won. Totally stoked. Totally thrilled. Couldn't be happier. So, anyways, back to focus. So, there's your stockings, two different colored reds, okay? And then for the back of the fireplace, so we actually blew this up a little bit because the block was really tiny, kind of tiny, and I wanted it to be more to the size we needed. So I chose this, you know, checkered fabric. It's going to be my bricks for the back there. Um, I have this left over from a uh, napkin project. Um, it totally suits the back of the hearth there sort of thing. And then I have some, I made a boo-boo on my sketch for my tree, so I needed to reuse it, so I'm making presents <laughs> out of this fabric. Don't waste anything. So, and see, I make mistakes all the time. Clearly, every episode, I'm making some sort of mistake. And then this is like my, I kind of mantle, I try and kind of chose that. So, you know, pick your fabrics. It doesn't have to be fancy pantsy. It can be very plain. And this, I think, was the very front. So I was going to the front of the fireplace sort of thing for the brick. So, and I just chose a very creamy tan kind of color for the base of the background. And I did foundation um, press on this as well, just because it was going to be a lot of, applique going on and it was going to make it pucker it a bit and you kind of need some a nice sturdy space to sew to so i guess what our first thing is, is how we're going to break this down into the pattern that we need it to be so i would think that the hearth the very back part here would go on first and then i would need to make my mantle to go across that but maybe i should tick tuck my brick wall even behind that right so have my hearth and my brick wall and then the mantle to go across that right so we're gonna get the size that we need just by line I blew this up on just on my printer it's nothing nothing too complicated okay and where did my pencil go oh sorry I put it away and you just want to use your like your little ruler to um there you go, there it is. to measure up the size of your hearth, okay, doesn't have to be exact, right? Okay, so let's just put a line there, and we'll go to this side, and it's about there, and we'll build off of that, right? Okay, so let's do those two snips with our scissors, and save these little bits. You might find them useful for another little project, right? That you need just that little bit okay and it is about the same size width wise so we'll just trim it you could use a rotary cutter too but i really want to use all of this like um foundation stuff right so there we go that looks like it could go i think we might square it up a bit though that's a bit goofy Bit on an angle. Weird. Right, I think that's a bit better. There we go. So there, and now we're going to need to put our, where did our brick wall go? Ah, there we go. Okay. And then the same with the brick wall. You just line it up. Okay. 
figure that, okay, that looks pretty good. We'll get some straight cuts. Because, you know, I think most brick walls that I know are pretty straight. Fall has really started to uh, settle here. It was quite nippy this morning. Those who may not know, I'm the crossing guard for our little village here. And, uh, see, village Hillsburg, township of there. <laughs> um, and, uh, it was, uh, I almost had to put layers on this morning. It was so chilly. All right, so that's how we're going to build that. And now we need our, like, little mantelpiece. So we'll cut a strip of that. Let's do it an inch. Level it up on the other side. Okay, now you just need to get the right size. Okay, not that long. Trim it off about an inch. This is going to be just like a hit and miss, because obviously this is just a pattern for a picture, right? Okay, so there we go. we got to start to it, and then we'll build our little fireplace. You know, don't forget to layer your, your flames. Maybe the, that's a little bit much, so we'll just use those two. Okay, move those off to the side. And then we'll just move that onto here. Okay. Once we get our bit of a proper placement, we can pop a few pins in and do some stitching around. There we go. Okay. Let's level this right on the line so we get some visual like confirmation that it's somewhat straight. Okay. All right. Just pop a few little pins to hold it down because as you're stitching, it's going to pull all those fabrics together, right? So we want to do these two first and then we'll work on the other two because that's going to overlap there. So we don't actually have to stitch on either side of this one, okay? Don't, don't waste your thread and don't waste your stitch time. Okay, so that's why I think about it first. Get some of your layers going and then work from it from there. Okay. I'm just going to use black to me. That just seems the easiest one to outline for your, when you're doing your applique. So I'm going to just work my way from the bottom of the brick fireplace top to it and then come around to from the bottom of the hearth and go all the way around. I'm like not even going to stop in the center. Okay. So a quick little ziggy zag. Do not sew over your pins. And this is where you can, you know, make your own creation block. Like if you don't, if you don't like uh, the, you know, this hearth one here, then by all means, uh, you know, think of something else that you would like to do. You can maybe put a, I don't know, bearskin rug or something in front. You know? Unstuff one of those tiny stuffing toys your kids have and stick that in front. <laughs> Probably terrorize poor children. <laughs> coming down and touching that blue before you pivot okay Is everybody decorating for fall I got a couple of really big pumpkins the other day from a local market country crops just not too far from here and uh, yeah we got five big pumpkins from that nice nice really cool white one too and I always, I always decorate them and, and carve them up. Uh, there's uh, a few years ago, I did a, a white one for a neighbor uh, and made it look like Swiss cheese and I carved a black rat into it and uh, painted it all up and she, she absolutely loved it. Sometimes I'm just artsy fartsy with a few things, but not a lot of things. <laughs> back where we started and then we can work on our fire and the mantle okay 
And really, all in all, this really shouldn't take too long. Once you have your parts, um, your cut out, uh, like trimmed out, you're you're pretty much just place so, place so, place so, right? Okay. So on this one here, and we're gonna hang our little red stockings off of this, right? Looks somewhat right. That looks pretty good. Okay. We could just hold that while we stitch. We'll work from edge to edge. It always comes to just after Thanksgiving, we're always thinking about okay, you know, what's Halloween and then Christmas and. It's always so busy at Christmas. I always really have to start thinking about it now to get ahead of the game. Right. Oh, that did not sound very good. Yeah, negatory Batman. I don't know. Quite a jam under there. At least I can get my pedal under, though. So just re-thread it all the way from the beginning. Okay. Doo -doo. Sometimes machines have attitudes. Oh, fix. Okay, okay, okay. Raise the presser foot, leave a bar, and then turn power off again. talking to me. Didn't like that at all. Let me see. Reset, okay. I, I gotta find back to my zigzag stitched. Ah, uh, there we go. What it was. I had mine at 3.6 and 0 0.65. That's what I had my zigzag stitches at. So make sure the back is okay. Yeah, it didn't jam up or anything, so I don't know what really happened. So maybe I'm trying to go too fast with Speedy Gonzales with all these layers of uh, foundation and so on and so forth. So, you know, you know, lots of heavy to the pedal with the metal there. of our hearth our mantle and the top of our fireplace okay and then this is where you when you're all done this is where you can accent your stitches with a little bit of brick and so on and so forth so I think what we will do is we will put our fire down I'm not sure I will do layer by layer that's quite a big fire <laughs> maybe we turn the fire down a bit <laughs> I burn our stockings Come around there. <laughs> there we go. We don't want singed stockings. Okay. So we'll place that there because we're going to cover a little bit of piece of this black. It's going to cover the front of the, the 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 flame, so we can actually start on this side and just work our way around. And just be careful. Um, go slow uh, because you got a few layers here, and because I've actually have sewn. Uh, some of these layers together. There's actually like a couple of four or five in some of these points here because I changed color and little did little squares and cut pumpkins from it. So we will just put her around. Get to stop and start where you need to with your needle. At least it's easy to flip around. So just a little block. It's not like this huge project that was behind me there. That was so heavy. I got a major cramp in my shoulder flipping the flipping it around to do the leaves on the outside here because it was just so heavy. All that fabric. So recycled drapery and lazy boy and ottoman and all sorts of fun stuff. So 
another big half a bucket or a big bucket full so of, of remnants, so I'll have to think of something else to do with it. <laughs> It was, uh, it was nice to, you know, reduce, reuse, and recycle, right? So, this less stuff that was going to get thrown away made, made a pretty awesome piece of art. So, it's actually going to hang up in our township um, council building, or town, township building um, shortly. I chatted them, and they would be quite honored to have her. So there's one layer, one layer of flames, okay, and then I'll put the other layer, which I think I'll trim down just a little bit more, here, and here, it's not so crazy, okay, so I'll just stitch around that, just like we did the other one. I just thought the mix of the oranges and the yellows and stuff would make it look really cool, like it was actually, you know, real fire. And it reuses what I had left over from the pumpkins that I was cutting out. So it just goes to show you, you can really just keep every little bit of scrap. Not every little bit. Don't be a hoarder. <laughs> the good bits and reuse them. Sometimes you just need that little triangle of black to make a snowman nose, right? So don't waste it. You can use it. Just put it in a proper container. So you know all your little small bits in there. Almost there. It's getting a little quite thick here, so that's why it's giving me a little. It's growling at me. stitch and cut. Now we need the front. Okay. So it was on an angle and in kind of really two pieces. So because there was the front of the fireplace and then a bit of the, um, I guess the stone front. The stone, I guess that's what they call it. I don't know. What do you call the front of the fireplace? Okay. So we will get a couple of strips. Let's look on this side. So we'll get a couple of even, even strips here, maybe um, an inch and then maybe three quarters of an inch. Let's try that. Okay, we don't need that big one, so we'll probably cut that in half. Maybe three quarter inch from that. So we'll do the one inch on the bottom and the three quarter inch over the flames. How's that? seems like it should be just past the fireplace hearthy part right okay and then if that goes up here we can cut it just a little smaller okay we'll do three quarters and square it up all right that should just lay over there and then that can lay on an angle from there. And that should hopefully give it the dimension that we're looking for. Should pop the pin in there. That's gonna be a bit thick trying to get over those flames, so I'll have to go slow. No crazies. Okay. And then this one, just a little off the angle. Okay. There we go. How's that look? Look okay? 
every man's being quiet today. Okay. He's like, just so. <laughs> Okay, no, that one side was a little higher than the other. There we go, that's better. All right. All right. Now, since we have to go all the way around, I'm going to start at the bottom, make sure I get those all secure first. And don't bump into your pins. We just have some stockings to build and the tree. Okay. Try and sew the two together. Like get your, your zigzag right in between. Yeah. There we go. A nice little seal. Pins out. Okay. There we go on the right side. Now when you're going over the flames, just be a little slower. My girlfriend's got a, her mom's got a Bernina for sale. It's quite an old one, but it's, you know, those old reliable machines. I'm uh, like, I don't even know what to offer her for it. I'd love to be able to buy it. Where do I stick it? <laughs> Where does it go? I got no place for it. And then just this one little bit down here. <laughs> Are you talking, Sophie? Are you talking? We were playing, so you'd leave mommy alone, so I would be able to shoot this big, this, this show. Yeah, I know, right? All right, so we'll cut out our stockings real quick here. Okay, and just follow your little pattern. They don't have to be exact. Each one could be a little different, you know. I thought it was cute. I was put one big one on the on the mantle. <laughs> I was like, is that yours? <laughs> So there's two. I can always sew the other ones on afterwards, but we'll get, we'll get you the idea that you... That one had different color too. Let's just round that out a bit. Shorten the length. There we go. Okay. So we'll put these guys on. Just up at the top here. Pop a little pin in. Just hold it in place while you're getting your stitching around. It's going to be thick in some spots, so be careful. Don't be jabbing yourself. It's going to hurt. Okay, there we go. Stitch a couple of those down. And we'll get the tree done. kind of working on like six layers here so and we're just stopping on a curve on the outside with your needle just a little bit of cotton after like from a little cotton ball just a little fluff right at the top because this is just going to hang in the quilt shop right it's never going to be washed so it's going to be one of those art pieces so i mean you could use fake fur you could use whatever you like we're getting there almost there. Oops, 
this guy will right be a pain. your scraps on these little blocks like you you know you wouldn't think so but you know you do stuff quite a bit okay so there we go so far so good loving it okay let's give her a tree a chop <laughs> okay now make sure you're cutting it out correctly i had to obviously literally do this twice because <laughs> i was like wait a second that means the tree's on the other side of the room if i do it that way <laughs> that's not the pattern <laughs> And this has got some uh, really interesting texture on this green. So I thought it would um, it really look like a big old Christmas pine tree. And I, there's no lights on the tree. There's there's nothing, you know, to decorate it yet. I thought about putting some beads. I got a little uh, tube of white beads to make, make uh, you know, a couple little, um, um, I don't know, what do they call those? Sashings or whatever to go around. Okay. Oops, kind of round on the little stem there, dorky dork. There we go. And then, was it till we disappeared? What was it in the picture? Yeah, it was pretty much half, so I'll give this a little trim. And we got ourselves a tree. There we go. And we'll just pin that on. It was up a bit, so we've got to put a couple presents underneath. So I want it in just a smidge, like as from the seam allowance. So when we sew it, it's just going to come right next to it. Okay. When we sew the blocks together. Okay. Do, do, do. All right. We're almost there. Stick with me. It'll be cute when we're done. And this is where you can add like um, a family photo on the background or put the kids art in the background or you know make snowman wall hanging you know you could do all sorts of things right or just leave a plain Always do a little shifting. Your little needle. Don't sew into your pins. just a nice big circle wreath on the wall or something like that or string lights across you've got those little um, beads of lights that you can get to add to projects they're pretty cool kind of like a bunch of little light breaks definitely a lot of applique on this one it's pretty much all it is but it's certainly going to make a cute block when it's all done. And then we can add some nice, lovely stitching in the background when we're quilting it all up on the long arm or on your domestic. I mean, that's totally up to you. Or you can even hand stitch stuff in. Rocking chair or the edge of a rocking chair or a table with cookies or, you know, maybe a little toy train or something going around. And because we 
had, you know, red and orange and stuff over on this side. I didn't really want to pull it on to the tree. I got some blues. So there we go. And you could just make this. I mean, the drawing was with just a couple little, you know, rectangles and squares over each other. So that's completely up to you. Make them any size you like. I thought I had this one strip of fabric that was left over. I had some blue, blue and white and, and uh, blue, white stripes. So I figured, why not? There's like three matching presents right there. So cut a little square. We'll cut a little rectangle. And of course, make them any size you like. Want big prezzies? Make big prezzies. Want small prezzies? Make small prezzies. Super easy. Okay. There we go. These people are spoiled and rotten. Look at their presents. <laughs> Under the tree. Just tucked under there. Sound like Bob Ross. Tuck a little tree right here. Make it all pretty. <laughs> that guy's an amazing artist. Let me tell you. If you haven't had a chance to watch him, he's on, he's on Netflix. And he is just amazing. Amazing. He makes it look so flippin' easy. I've tried. It doesn't come out that way. <laughs> the uh, presents with, like I said, beads or grab some ribbon or what have you. I think I'm going to use one of the dark ones in the back here to overlap a smidge. There we go. sure everybody's got their own little Christmas traditions. We like uh, going to the movies. It's usually not very busy, but we've noticed in the past um, <laughs> five or six years that everybody seems to be uh, onto our little idea, going to the movies on Christmas. So I think last year we went Boxing Day. <laughs> Why not? Okay, put a little white one over here. Might not be able to see the white one because of the creamy colored background, so we'll just put this one here. That'll be the last of our prezzies. One for everybody in the house. Animals not included. <laughs> All right, and you can choose to match your thread for your applique. I mean, that's completely up to you. Um, I didn't figure you wanted to hang out with me for, you know, six hours today doing this block by uh, thread change or so I did it all black. A gray, a silver, a white would have suited it just as well. All right. I believe, my dear folks, that that is our Christmas block minus the Merry Christmasness because that will come on later. Uh, when we're most likely quilting up the block, okay? So thanks very much for joining me for this weekend project and 35 minutes of your time. I really appreciate that. Um, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and tell all your friends. And if you have any ideas for future Christmas blocks, please just send me a message. I'm very friendly. We talk, we chat, we come home, you know, come over for tea. Okay. Thanks for joining me. See, uh, take care of yourself and, uh, and join me for Long on Wednesdays. We do lots of fun stuff there too, okay? Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.